I want to welcome everybody to our final installment of Baltimore County Recreation and Parks uh, Women History Month series. Uh, tonight, we have a very, very special guest. Her name is Miss Cheyenne Parker, uh, power forward in the WNBA for the Atlanta Dream. And I want to say um, welcome to Baltimore County, Miss Cheyenne Parker. Mm -hmm. We appreciate Thank you being you. here. Thank you so much. I appreciate everybody tuning in. Um, you've been with us for the last two months or so as we've been doing these uh, first our Black History Month series and then this month, our Women's History Month um, series where we honor phenomenal women who are excelling um, in, the, in their career fields. And tonight, this guest is extremely special. And um, our, our motto here is that we want to give people their flowers while they still can smell them. So again, Cheyenne, thank you for being with us. Absolutely. All right, so First, we'll get started. Um, if you could just tell us a, a little bit about your um, your childhood background and upbringing um, and what led to you being this amazing woman that you are right now. Um, well, I grew up in New York. Um, mm -hmm. Left New York when I was 13 and moved to Georgia. And then I left Georgia when I was in the 10th grade and finished high school in North Carolina. And then I went to college in North Carolina, graduated in Tennessee. And that was my childhood. Mm -hmm. um, and I mean, it, it was, you know, I had, I had a lot of obstacles along the way, you know, a lot of young ladies um, deal with, you know, a lot, a lot of um, setbacks and um, hurdles and just, it's sometimes harder to, to get the recognition that, that the guys would get like coming up in school with, when it came to like sports. But, um, but that was just, it, it had become like a norm. Like it was just a part of it, you know? And so I didn't let that keep me from wanting to play ball or wanting to pursue that further, like in school and go to college. Okay. So when, as you were growing up and, you know, you making these different transition and moves going through these different obstacles, um, when did you realize that you had real talent, like in a game of basketball? It really wasn't until college. Mm -hmm. Like when I when I was in high school, I didn't get to really play a full year of high school ball, and it was mainly just because of my lack of focus. Every wow. year was something like either I missed too many days of school, getting kicked out of school for fighting, you know, just not focused at all, um, easily distracted. And at that time, um, it took until I got to, it actually took my coach in high school, once I got to North Carolina, her telling me like that I could get a scholarship to go to college. When she told me that, I was like, oh, like that, that would be cool to go to college. You know, it kind of made me change my mindset a little bit. And mm -hmm. so I had to do a lot of summer school. Yeah and a lot of catching up but i was able to still graduate and um on time and get a scholarship to play ball and then once i got to college that's when i started to compete against you know um better players mm -hmm. much and i guess i just started um getting better like in high school, I was it was very raw. You know, I was just long. I was just long, yeah. blocking shots, mm -hmm. but didn't do much in high school. It wasn't until college when I really started to like blossom into the player that I um, that I am today. You know, right. So, like, as you're making this transition, like, I, I didn't know that about your story and your and like in researching about you. Like, I thought that you know it all translated from you know like the typical story. You grow up, you hoop in, you you got the size. All American. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, like it's been researching you. I, I didn't know that. Like I didn't know that you really didn't play in high school. Um, mm -hmm. So like like your coach being that mentor for you and just like putting things to, into perspective, whereas though like you can really see yourself having a future, you know, in the game of basketball kind of woke you up and matured you a little bit. Mm -hmm. So yeah. um, like moving on, like how how did you, you know, adjust to that transition from, um, you know, Really not taking the game of basketball serious to you seeing that okay I can I can compete on a high level against um, you know other college athletes like how did that transition go when you finally got to High Point University? Um, it was rocky, you know. I uh, 
<laughs> I, I hated running in high school. So right. I got to college and they had us talking about a seven minute mile at 6 a.m. And it was, you know, it took a it took a lot. Like that first summer, it was like it really did make me. Like, you know how to say make you or break you? Yeah. It made me, you know, mm-hmm. into that to that athlete that I um, became in college, like just that D1 athlete, you know, getting up in the morning, doing those workouts, then having to go to class, then having to go to study hall, like, and just going through that grind and, and sticking to it. That's what kind of started to mold me into, um, you know, a player. And, and, and like I said, it was rocky. There were times where I was like ready to quit and ready to go home, you know, um, and just, frustrated and and then the school the school side of it is 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 its own stress but staying staying prayed up and having the the support of my family too it was huge you know I when those those times when I would want to quit I would call someone and like my mom or my sister or get a nice card from my sister in the mail like motivating me and just telling me to keep going keep going like that helped a lot and just staying prayed up my family is very prayerful and spiritual, and um, it definitely resonated with me. Okay, my entire career. Right. So let me ask you this: like, and like when you first got there, were you were you that teammate that that made people run the extra miles? Like, when you say it was rocky, because you know, like you know, myself, you know, playing a little bit of college ball and things like that. Like, did you see yourself as that teammate where, like, when you first got on campus, it, you wasn't gone. You more so was like, I'm going to do what I want to do. I want to learn my own way and things of that nature until you finally transition. <laughs> Yes, I was very defiant. Mm-hmm. Um, probably my entire college career, right. like I, I had to really fall flat on my face. Mm-hmm. My senior year, it happened right at the end. It was perfect timing, honestly. Um, right. And I really had to like snap out of it. But most of my college career, I was very rebellious mm-hmm. and just like living on the edge and just <laughs> enjoying college. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but. And that's why I, I'm so, that's the reason I'm so, so spiritual to this day is because I know that God was really watching over me and he had a plan for me, a bigger plan for me to just excel and to, you know, be successful in that, in that way so that I can, so that I can give back and talk to, you know, the younger generation and tell them to stay focused. Something that I wish I was telling myself, you know what I'm saying? My younger self. So it's like, it's like a full circle thing and it's um it lets me know god is real because here i am Mm -hmm. you know yeah and it seems like um your your foundation is based on faith and i always tell people like if you believe with that first the rest will handle itself no matter what you go through so um you know i mean we all have our shortfalls you know you live and you learn from you know certain Mm -hmm. lessons so um i'm glad that it all came full circle for you because i mean you are where you're at right now you know so um like during your time at High Point, what would you consider like your biggest accomplish, accomplishment or your highest point at High Point? Uh, uh, well, I think it would be the, the triple double, which I believe I still hold that record. Yeah. Um, I think I'm the only athlete, the only W, I mean, um, women's um, player. I don't know if the men's. No, I think both. No, you're like, yeah, uh, yeah I think both. it's both. Yeah. Yeah, it's both. Yeah. So I believe that's my highest accolade and achievement there. Um, and then what was the other part of that question? So basically it was just like, what was your, what was your high point and what was your biggest accomplishment while you were at high point? Um, also getting defensive player of the year, one year in the big South conference, that was huge. Um, I was leading the nation in blocks above Brittany Griner and that was huge. Right. I think those were like the biggest accomplishments um, on the court. Um, on the court, I really enjoyed the campus. I really enjoyed that whole experience. The campus is beautiful. Yeah. Um, I didn't want to have to leave High Point, but, you know, um, the way that worked out, it just, the, the coach always changed. And so it just wasn't meant to be, you know, it was God's will for me to move on. So I ended up leaving High Point um, my third year, right? Yep, my junior year. And that's really not, no, like, that's not a common thing, leaving your senior year. And that's how you know I was, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and I, I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't off the chain or anything like that, but I just, you know, just was a knucklehead, you know, mm-hmm. and um, and the coach was just like, "I'm not having that." Like, right. if if you if you saying you don't want to be here, you could go. Right. <laughs> so right. she let me, she let me go. Um, yeah. 
And so, but it was for, it was for a reason, you know, I went to middle Tennessee state and um, dominated there for that one year and really raised some eyebrows and drew the attention of WNBA, you know, and right. started getting national recognition, which was huge. Um, and it got me drafted first round. Wow. Yeah. And, and I honestly, like, I just remember, you know, I remember the first time I met you and, and, you know, my brother, he didn't tell me that you left. And so when I seen it, I'm like, I was so, you know, surprised to see, I'm like, for one, I didn't know that you left, but two, I seen you get drafted. And I'm like, Oh, that can't be, you know what I mean? The same person. So, um, you know, leading up to those, those moments, like going through everything that you've been through, um, what was your what was your thought process when you got the national attention and you realized that it was a real possibility for you to get drafted? Just to work. Like I got into this mode where I just like ball is life. Like I got it tatted on me. Like it was just like it became a mentality and I just stayed in the gym. Mm -hmm. Um like I, I have people at MTSU, like if you were to go around campus and ask like the football players, they would always see me in the weight room, like mm -hmm or in the gym on a gun, on a shooting gun shooting, like at weird hours, like any time of night, it didn't matter. It just, it was like a mentality that I had, like I'm going to the league, you know? Like I yeah. just stayed in the gym. That's the one thing I did. Mm -hmm. The one thing I did, I stayed in the gym. Right. So like you, you would say like your whole, you did a full 360 from your time at High Point to when you got to Middle Tennessee State, it seems like, it just like seemed like your maturity level just came to a peak when you got to Middle Tennessee State and then your dream became a realization. Is that, you know what I mean, what you're coming from? Um, yes, for the most part. Um, I can definitely agree with when it comes to staying in the gym. Mm -hmm. I definitely ch transitioned that when I left High Point. I was much more focused on the goal of becoming a WNBA player. Right. Um, but I still did allow myself to, um, I guess, well, what happened my senior year, the last, you know, right at the end, I failed my drug test for, for mm -hmm. weeks. Like, okay. and for, for smoking, for smoking pot. And it was like such a traumatic thing because it was like right at the end of the season, I had an amazing season. Mm -hmm. We were getting ready to go to March Madness and do all that fun stuff. And I'm trying to go to the league. So it right. was like a really traumatic moment. And that was the flat on my face I was talking about earlier. Right. That was the moment when that happened. It was like, all right, now you're putting stuff before this goal that you claim is so important to you and precious to you. Now you're putting stuff before that. And I had to really self-reflect and think about what I really want in life. Like, do I want to be a failure? Do I want to continue to have make bad choices? Because that's all it really was, was just a bad choice. Like, I knew that I was on my last strike and I still chose to smoke weed you know so it was like that was the lesson in that that i had to learn you know um and it was really amazing how when that happened don't get me wrong i was depressed like they kicked me off the team and stuff like it was very depressing but the one thing i did was stay prayed up and i kept having faith that i was still going to make it and i stayed in the gym i went to the gym three times a day like because i was since i wasn't practicing anymore i wasn't on the team that's really all I all I had was class, and I only had like two classes. That was my senior year, so I was done pretty much with college. Like, I only had like two classes that semester, so I had a lot of free time, and I just stayed focused, stayed in the gym, went to Bible studies, just continued to feed my soul, my spirit, and got drafted fifth. Right. <laughs> So let's let's just talk about that. Like you know, I've been you know I've been a part of some um, you know. Luckily for me, I didn't make it, you know, I wanted it, you know what I mean? But it, I, I think about my career and I always go back to like, what could I have done different? But I've, I've seen some friends of mine, you know, get drafted and, and I've been a part of those celebrations. So, I mean, you, you know, getting drafted to the WNBA, like, can you relive and think about like that exact moment? Like what was going through your mind when your name got called? <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I've recorded, uh, I actually have, I still have the video I, I just put it up. I just rec started recording. I invited my teammates because obviously I wasn't invited to the draft. Right. Um, so I watched it from my dorm, my mm -hmm. dorm room. And I invited my teammates, to, my my old teammates to come watch it. The men's team came and we all was just watch, you know, had food, was watching. And I'll never forget when they called my name, um, 
it like the whole my whole dorm like abrupted like it was right. crazy everybody was so excited i was just um i couldn't believe it honestly mm -hmm. i was like she did it she really she really chose she chose me like it was very surreal and um emotional mm -hmm. i called my mom that's the first person i called my phone was blowing up right but i called my mom and like we just cried <laughs> We just cried on the phone like mom <laughs> it was very emotional just because everything that was going on at the time and the emotions were just heightened you know it was just it was a yeah. very special moment yeah you had your um you know in pursuit of happiness moment you know like when, yeah when he got the job and he thought about everything he'd been through and it just was like accumulation of emotions you know so um, definitely, you know, I can't imagine what that would feel like, but, you know, I've had some moments in my life where I've definitely been elated to the point of, you know, not even be able to comprehend this type of happiness, yeah. you know? So, um, you know, you're, you, you get drafted, um, you get your name called, like, what's the next steps? Like, are you ready to hit the gym? Are you ready to get going? Like what, what's the next step after that? Um, it was a really short turnaround the way it works with the women. Like after mm -hmm. school, once school ends, you head straight to camp. Sometimes you don't even get to, some people didn't, they don't even get to walk. Um, they don't even grab like, you know, do the ceremony. I mean, right. but I was able to do the ceremony. I still was able to do my ceremony. And then I headed straight to uh, Chicago mm -hmm. and, um, and it's training camp. It's like, it's real short. Training camps are very short. It's about three, three and a half weeks. Mm -hmm. And you meet all, you, you meet all these famous starstruck teammates. I was, Della Don was mine. And I was like starstruck, like mm -hmm. took a selfie with her, like, you're my teammate now. Right. But but um once you get over that starstruck moment, it's like, all right, you're really starting, but you're starting back as like a freshman, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, and it was it was it, it took adjusting, you know, and you go from being the go to player, the star, to being like, Yeah, rookie, go go get the right. ball, you know, go right. rack the balls up, you know. So it definitely was um character building. You know, and my my coach just continued to tell me to trust the process. Right. Every time she, every time the game would end, and I only had two minutes in the game, I'd be like, and she'd be like, trust the process, CP, trust the process. You know, mm -hmm. so yeah. that's what I would I would I would try to, but you know, my stubbornness and just my competitiveness, I wanted to be on the court, mm -hmm. so I, I had emotions that let it kind of mess with my confidence a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what I would also tell my younger self, like, don't allow that because it, it can happen and don't allow it to mess up your confidence. So if a young lady is watching this, don't allow that to mess with your confidence because it is a process. You're coming in to play with women. Okay. Mm -hmm. These women are strong. You know, mm -hmm. I never forget my first preseason, <laughs> my first preseason game against, um, it was Kelsey Bone. Mm -hmm. She's not in the league anymore, but she was, she was a really strong dominant post. Oh, I went flying. She went like this one good time, mm -hmm. right in my chest, my little self. I was real scrawny coming in, you know? Right. And and so I just, just that, that the physicality of the game, mm -hmm. uh, transitioning, like you, you got to trust the process. You got to right. trust the process, you know? Right. You really do. Yeah. So like, um, like before I graduated high school, I went to, you know, one of the top um, public schools in Baltimore. And I also went to the top um catholic school in baltimore and at the catholic school we're known for producing um, extremely talented uh you know women basketball players so just to give you a little a little side note um i definitely went to high school with angel mccartry oh yeah me nice. and angel went to school i know angel school. yeah we went to school together okay. for about two years um and then uh you know angel reese she's all she also came out of my high school she's currently at the university of maryland but you know she's like top two in the nation a couple, mm. a couple years ago so um you know having that understanding and having respect for women's basketball is something that always been ingrained in my dna because i've literally i literally went greatness like it was some someone that i was like i wow, love like, that yeah That's like awesome. she was it was unreal seeing that you know happen for her but yeah um you know getting back to yourself and um you know leading up um to your advice for young women like what what is the biggest thing that you can tell young female athletes who hope to wish and, and pray to be in a position that you are right now? Um, it would be for sure to just stay focused, um, to remain confident and believe in yourself. Never doubt yourself. 
You know, when, you, when those little doubts creep in your mind, which they will, rebuke them. Like, that's the best word I can say. You got to literally rebuke them out of your, cancel, cancel them. Like, literally cancel them. As if, as if your brain was like a computer. Because now that's, you know, like, let's do it like that. Like, let's say it's IG. Cancel that message. You got a message in your brain that's saying, you can't, you ain't good enough to play against them. You ain't good enough. Cancel it. Literally mm -hmm. delete. Don't even and, and that's how that's the mentality that you have to have. Um, confidence, believe in yourself and stay focused. That's the right. biggest one. Right. Stay focused. Don't let anything, any distractions outside of you mess you up from your goals. Mm -hmm. Don't forget your goal and ambitions. Mm -hmm. I, I, I also believe that you know, confidence is everything. Um, whether it's whether it's on or off the court, I think confidence, you know, confidence. Yeah, really helps you, you know, move and and stay mm -hmm. focused and stay disciplined, whatever you want to do. So mm -hmm. yeah. I definitely appreciate that, you know, that advice that you have for the young women that may be watching right now, and we'll see this at a later date. Um, so I'm a new father. I know that you oh, are a new mother. Yes. How, how is it, and how does it feel to have this amazing blessing? And being a new mother, man, can't really even put it into words. I'm trying to tell you, it's it's really crazy. Um, it's life changing, right? You Please. know, truly my greatest my greatest accomplishment, achievement, anything, nothing surpasses it. You know, all the defensive player, none of that, none of that right. matters anymore. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, it's really my life really has changed. Um, but I'm so blessed and thankful for her because it's like she's given me this new fuel and hunger to just provide for her. And it's like woken up this beast in me, like right. this season gonna be spooky. Spooky yeah. season coming up, you know? Like I'm very looking forward to that. Right. Yeah. But so, it's been amazing. Right. And um how about you, new dad? Oh, okay. Congrats! I didn't know that. Yeah, thank you, thank you. It's awesome. like just you like you said, a I have a boy, and it's, it's one of the like you said. It's, it's a feeling that I can't describe. Mm. Um, I never worried this much in my life, um, but you know, time goes fast, and I, I honestly appreciate every moment of it. Like it's, it, yeah. it's not. Like it's, yes, it's not. so true. Yeah. So as you are, you know, a women's professional athlete, um, how are you finding your balance and, you know, maintaining your career while also being, you know, your mother? Um, it's definitely been a learning process, you know, so far. I mean, baby girls, three months. So it's been three months wow. and um, I've been I've been, you know, slowly adjusting. Thankfully, I have my mom. Um, mm -hmm. She was there. When I when I was when I first gave birth, I had her and my sister there. So that's, you know, rare and huge. It was really huge. You know, um, I had so much help, um, in that first, those first few weeks, they were both there and able to just help me with, with things. Um, and, um, once, <laughs> once they left, that's when the real test of child came. Um, and I was kind of like, anxious about it i'm like because you know they were they were helping with so many things like eating you mm -hmm. know, so that i have enough breast milk for her um and then you know being able to pump and make the bottles and having them watch her so i can go work out and right. you know just the little things just the little things cleaning up even um those those little things i was worried about i'm like i'm gonna have to maintain all of this yeah <laughs> you know um but it, but once they left, I was able to do it. You know, my partner and I, he and I have been able to really um, have a good unit and teamwork and effort. And um, don't get me wrong, it ain't been easy. I know. <laughs> like, this is it's not for the week, you know. Skylar, Skylar had just posted, Skylar Diggs, she just posted um, her in the gym. And she her caption was like, I'm just over here being a mom and um, something like that and a pro. And I'm like, it ain't for the week, mama. Keep going. Right. It right. ain't, you know. Um, but we've, we've found a nice rhythm. You know, we're figuring it out. 
Um, um, and the, the way that it, what makes it easier is that he's on board, you know, he, he's got my back. He's able to stick with me and really help me with getting in shape, you know, because those times when I have every morning, I do my, I do my virtual workout in the mm -hmm. house. So I prepare a bottle and put it next to the nightstand for him. Like, and he holds it down, you know, so that I can get my workout in. And then we go to the gym together and he holds it down so that I can get my workout in to the court. Mm -hmm. I mean, like later in the day. Right. Right. So, so, you know, these two a days we've been doing it. We've been getting them in and um, just making meal prepping and making dinner and just making sure I'm eating right so that I can right. provide the breast milk for, for the baby as well as stay hydrated and recover my body. Right. Um, so it's been it's been fun, though. Like, I honestly have felt I have not felt overwhelmed. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've just I've just felt like I said, this hunger, this fuel that I have that just like to to really uh, provide. Right. It's it's just amazing to hear that perspective, you know, because, um, you know, women athletes get so much, you know, flat just on, you know, becoming a mom and, you know, maintaining, you know, being a professional mm -hmm. while trying to maintain a household. And, um, you know, you hear stories, you know, like um, the former track star losing, you know, endorsements for being pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you hear about, you know, certain entertainments. They don't want to have families when they're at the peak of their career. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, how is that fair? You know what I mean? Why why does that rap come that way? So hearing what you have to do to maintain your career is honestly an incredible story. And, and I really appreciate you sharing that with us. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, I read in an article... Um, I was just reading some things about you and you said this quote and it just stuck out to me. Um, and, you know, that's what I sent you in, uh, you know, the little uh, posting. And it says, like in an interview, you says, call it love, call it God's plan, call it what you will. I've realized I've been given a blessing. What does that mean to you? And like, what were you trying to say? Because I wanted to get a little bit more detail from you about that. Mm -hmm. but, but to me, when I was reading the article, that stood out so much to me. Mm -hmm. um, well, just basically like, Naomi wasn't something that I was like, okay, at this time, I'm going to get pregnant. I'm going to have her at this time. You know, it wasn't something that I planned um, to happen. Like, I've always been safe. I've been with my spouse for six six years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, those six years, I've always been responsible with that. That's, that's nothing that's ever been like a scare or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But at this particular time, you know, I was taking a break off my birth control. I was overseas away from him. So it was no concern, you know? And so <laughs> when it happened, it was, it was just a shock. You know what I mean? I came home and it was just, I had to really change my perspective because I had just signed with Atlanta, um, leaving Chicago and, you know, my, this was year seven. So this was like, all right, it's time to come in. Cause I had just came off my best season averaging 13 and eight, you know, so my, my, my focus obviously as an athlete is all-star, you know, time to, time to, you know, mm -hmm. set, put that imprint in the league. Um, so when this happened, it was just like, I had to really like, really humble myself, you know, and realize this is not my plan. This is God's plan. Yeah. You know, and it, and it, it really, it just, like I said, it just um, really changed my perspective. Um, I stayed, I stayed focused, uh, continued to, you know, play. I played up until the twenty-week mark when they, you know, when they say like, wow. <laughs> when they say, okay, you know, you can't. After twenty weeks, the baby moves from your pelvic area, so that's when you know it's dangerous and risky to, to try to do that. Um, but it's, it's. Um, that's what I meant by that. It, it is a blessing. Mm -hmm. Life, life is a blessing in itself. Mm -hmm. So to be able to create life, um, it, it, it just is special. And the way it happened, it, it let me know, like she's here for a reason and she's going to leave an imprint in this world one day, you know, and I'm just, my goal is just to do the best I can to lead by example and show her greatness, you know? Yeah. And I, I think you'll do that. She'll she'll be extremely proud of her mother. And mm -hmm. when she's old enough to see, you know, how amazing you are. Thank you. Yeah. So as we, um, you know, we, we talk about women's sports, like how do you feel about 
um, the culture of women's sports right now. You know, it's so much going on right now as far as, you know, NIL in college, um, in high school, if, if you're good enough. Um, you know, co the college women uh, coaches pay rate is skyrocketing, you know, but WNBA is still fighting for these for these wages. Like, what what, what, is, what is your outlook on this? on this disparity when it comes to women, women's and men's sports and just how you see things progressing or mm -hmm. you know, how, do you, how what is your outlook on it? Overall, I feel like women's sports in general is growing. Mm -hmm. It's continuing to grow year by year. You see it, you see it, you, the proof is in the pudding when you watch an NBA games and you see in commercials about women, right? And you see them, you know, constantly talking about that. That's, you know, that's, that's in itself. But I think the W, um, as its own entity sometimes holds itself back with the certain marketing schemes they have. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think once we can find the right marketing schemes and the right target audience, hopefully those numbers will change drastically, like mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, but we just got to get the right people, you know, doing the right things on right. that side, like on the side of just, like, who are we? Who is the WNBA? You know, wh what do you think about when, when you hear WNBA? You right. know, that's the type of um, thing I think we need some work with. And I think that's what kind of holds us back a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, but once we can find that, I'm, I'm confident that we'll skyrocket. Because even with the, the, the things that hold us back, we still are kind of making some noise you know Absolutely. um mm -hmm. and making big drastic yeah so i think it'll it's coming you know and i think just the right people have to talk to the right people and that's something right. that i'm continuing to be an advocate for you know mm -hmm. like especially when i'm done playing i'll have more time but i do have ideas myself because that's something i'm passionate about um even with the dream right now i'm really focused and honed in on helping build their market because the atlanta mm -hmm. dream is not really well known in the city right like Chicago sky was like, I came here and really see the disconnect, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm really focused on helping them build their franchise up right now. Like that's just something I'm passionate about because I feel like it's important. It's not mm -hmm. even about me. It's more about the league and the, mm -hmm. the growth of the league. So when I'm done playing, I definitely look forward to having a say and hope, hopefully they'll hear, they'll hear it or they won't, <laughs> but right. I at right. least let them hear, hear my ideas. And um, make yeah. some make some shake. Yeah, that's that's selfless, and you know it's honorable, you know, to to put you know people before yourself in a position that you're in. Like, I mean, it's it's extremely humble of you. So, um, I know they'll definitely appreciate it. You know, Atlanta Atlanta is a great city, and you know they're mm -hmm. welcome. Like you said, that um, they definitely could use the exposure. Mm hmm Because yeah. it's not like it's like it's such a marketable marketable area. There's no reason right. it should be people shouldn't know who the dream is, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So um, just getting back to it, like, I mean, talk about, you know, Cheyenne Parker, the businesswoman. Like, what do you have going on outside of basketball? Like, what what other things are you into? We, we want to hear it all. We want to hear about it because these young women need this type of motivation and inspiration. So I, I want them to hear all aspects of it and know that it can be done. Absolutely. Um. So I have um, an e-commerce business. It's mm -hmm. called Born Queen Boutique LLC. And um, it's basically a website where I sell different things like um, T-shirts that have my favorite quotes. Mm -hmm. um, some of those being, um, I, well, my favorite is I can and I will. That's my favorite one. I can mm -hmm. and I will watch. Um, and then different breed and then also relentless there's a shirt that says relentless and that's like one of my favorite words. I kind of live by that. Mm -hmm. Got that, got it tatted on my right. arm. <laughs> it's like, it's just something I've always, I always love that word because it just represents my mentality, my mindset. Um, so I, I sell those. And then I also have a calendar where um, I show like my versatility as a model, I model as well. Okay. So, the purpose of the calendar is more to, um, I guess, get the exposure of my brand out. You right. know, um, so what I did was I just traveled and took really nice pictures, um, different ones, some in bathing suits, some in lingerie, some in fashion, high fashion clothing, um, just to basically just to show my modeling versatility. 
So it's like it's a calendar, but it's really my portfolio. Mm-hmm. Uh, hoping that it lands, the, you know, gets gets in the right hands, <laughs> you know. Um, and then um, I also sell health supplements, mm-hmm. and that's a separate entity of its own. Um, but these supplements are all natural; they're herbs and oils. Have you ever heard of black seed oil or Absolutely. oil of oregano? Um, yeah, so I sell those as well because I'm really huge on natural health. Mm-hmm. Natural health is important to me. I don't like the idea of like medication. And I know it's going against the grain because it's, the, you know, the highest, you know, pharmaceutical company is the pharmaceutical company. Right. I get it. You know, I'm not trying to step on any toes, but I'm, go- I'm not going to hold my tongue about it. I want people to take care of their bodies, you mm-hmm. know, um, and not, you know, rely on medication. So I'm really huge on just natural um, herbs and oils. So that's why I'm selling them. <laughs> okay. So. When, when, when it's all said and done and, and you're done with the game, um, one, how do you want to be remember, be remembered? And two, where do you see yourself landing, you know, career-wise outside of your business? I would like to be remembered as a hardworking underdog who was completely relentless in every aspect. You know, the player who <laughs> may not have been invited to the all-star, but still showed up to the all-star because she believes she's going to be an all-star. Right. Um, you know, the player who probably going to get on your nerves because they're always reaching out, mm-hmm. trying to ask about endorsements and possible collaborations, advocating for myself. Like that's the, that's the player I want to be remembered as someone who um, was always in the community giving back. Um, not for, not for money, but just because it's important. Um, that's who I that's who I want to be remembered as as a player, for sure. Okay. Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open it up to um the guests that we have live right now. If you have any questions for Miss um, Cheyenne Parker, um, feel free to put them in the chat, and then we'll discuss them before we close out. So I'll give you guys you know a few seconds to uh, put anything that you want to ask Miss Cheyenne in the chat that we didn't go over, and um, we'll go from there. And if you don't have any questions, I'll continue to ask because, you know, I, I am, you know, loving this interview right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, says, uh, thanks for sharing your story with us. We, we truly appreciate it. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. I woke my baby up. Hey, <laughs> I accidentally touched it with this cold bottle. Woke her right up. Okay. Uh, Darrell Edwards says, will you ever come to a NASCAR race? Darrell! <laughs> he said what? He says, will you ever come to a NASCAR race? Oh, yeah, yeah, where? Of course I will come. What? Okay. This is an will invite. We? Yeah, definitely an invite. Yes, I will come. Absolutely. Yeah, Just let me know when and where. Yeah, I'll, I'll actually send you that schedule, so uh, we'll get it to you. Okay. Uh, that's, that's so, so if there aren't any more questions in the chat guys we're going to let um you know miss cheyenne get back to her beautiful baby yes and, uh, thank you no i'm not yeah. <laughs> i want to thank everyone for tuning in tonight um this is yeah. the end of our women's history month series um miss cheyenne parker again we appreciate your time um, we look forward to seeing you back on the court um this yeah. season um to see y'all at a wizards i mean i said wizards <laughs> game. come to the mystics game yeah no doubt like i'm i'm going to check it out for sure like i'll okay. definitely be there to support you i'll reach All out right. what you do, like when you're in town Baltimore. yeah um i'll reach out and you know i mean see if we can work some things out yes absolutely. So I'm, I'm I'm support support you. You. You know i mean you're my new favorite player um hey. yeah and Darrell, he definitely you know will pull up and i'll um, be there to support you as well and um, like I said, again, I, I truly appreciate appreciate you um, giving us a little bit of your time. Um, yes, like I said, this is all about giving you your flowers while you still can smell them. Thank you. Are, you. You are great already. If, if you don't do anything else, you're an extremely blessed woman. You're super Thank phenomenal. You. And I'm glad that you came to um, Baltimore County and joined us this evening. So on that note, 
Um, we're going to wrap it up. I appreciate everyone for tuning in and um, we're going to close it out. All right. Thank you. Right. Thank you, Cheyenne. Bye. All right.